Good morning. Just let the pews fill up a little bit as the church is open. Turn to your hymnal page 69, Nooch. And we're going to get into today's Sunday morning sermon. Megan up old church spiritual by humming like it sounded like when I was a kid in church. Um, okay. I was, uh, I got up this morning and I was tweeting and, uh, this thing happened, nothing bad, but it, it I said, Oh, this is a story. This is a lesson. So, um, there's a, I'm just looking at the tweets here. Uh, there's a Twitter site called attractions, I guess, attractions magazine, and they cover theme park stuff, I guess, you know, particularly Disney maybe. Um, and they wrote a tweet the other day, April 4th is, is a kingdom keepers series in development for Disney plus, according to Kevin Smith, it is, I am, uh, that Kevin Smith, uh, for those that are unfamiliar with the kingdom, uh, keepers series of books, they were written by Ridley Pearson. That's a fascinating story. Um, Ridley wrote a book about, uh, you know, uh, what happens at Disneyland or Disney Wor- world or land. One of them. Um, I think it was World, when uh, the park closes and like the park comes to life after, after dark, park after dark, Disney after dark. So uh, he did a whole series of books and he didn't even do it with Disney. It wasn't like he got permission from Disney. He just wrote it himself. They became so popular. Disney was like, all right. And they sell those books in the Disney park, man. So like when people tell you like, don't use other people's IP and stuff like that. Like, you never know. Ridley Pearson fucking turned it into a series of books. So John Favreau, uh, years ago was going to make a movie, I believe of kingdom keepers. And then it went away. And then he did, I think jungle book instead. And now he's doing Mandalorian, which fuck. I love the Mandalorian. So, um, there was a, a moment in time when the Disney Channel, uh, the Disney, well, Disney Plus, is that what it's called? Yes. Disney Plus, the app, uh, didn't have a name. It was in development, but they didn't have a name for it yet. Um, and in the beginning of the life of Disney Plus, uh, the Disney Channel was put in charge of the creative. So the folks that, you know, uh, brought you High School Musical and whatnot, uh, they were in charge of the, the channel. And so my agent one day called me and said, Hey, the folks at Disney wanted to meet with you. Um, and this is a couple of years ago. I put up a tweet where I was like, I'm working with the biggest IP I ever worked with. This was it. Um, and it was right before the heart attack. This all happened. And then I was working on it after the heart attack as well. So, uh, my agent was like, Hey, Disney wants to talk to you about, uh, they're hearing pitches on this show, Kingdom Keepers. They want to do for their, this new app, they're going to the Netflix like app that they're making and stuff, which we now all know is Disney plus. So, uh, I said, Disney wants to talk to me. Like I haven't dealt with Disney since Disney, um, owned Miramax back in the day when we were, when I was a kid, Disney owned all my early movies and then they sold Miramax, bought Marvel instead, much smarter business decision. So, uh, they said, go in and, and, uh, if you want to, and I said, you know what? That like, I'll go in for the fucking, just to watch their expressions change. So I said, I am, I'm pitched in a long time. I especially like on a corporate level. Fuck yeah, I'll go in, man. So I came up with a storyline. I wrote this, you know, uh, outline for what it was and stuff. Basically wrote the pitch down. And, you know, when you pitch in a room, you're talking to people and looking at their faces. So when I went to Disney Channel to meet the the folks and pitch, um, Gary was guys in charge there and stuff. Um, I said, uh, Hey man, like, uh, like I'm too old to fucking play this pitch game and stuff. So like, do you mind if I read this shit right off my laptop? I brought my laptop with me and like, I'll, you know, it's the pitch. 
I'm just going to, it's easier to read and it's way, I won't forget anything and it's way more involved on the page. And I'll, if it helps, I'll just look up at you guys from time to time, you know, and make sure we're making eye contact if you, and they were like, yeah, go ahead. So I pitched, uh, I read my pitch document and, uh, you know, when they told me that like, here's what we want from the book, the rest just kind of, uh, you know, let's hear what you would like to do. So if you're a Kingdom Keepers book fan, the, the, you know, it deviated from the book. So if you're like, man, I wanted to see that, you might not have wanted to see it because like it was my version that mashed up with Ridley's idea. So I pitched that and, and in Ridley's books, um, they're, they're wonderful reads, but they're, you know, they pick one of the villains and kind of stick with that villain and stuff. Uh, when, when I was told this is what they're looking for, they were like, just, you know, go Disney nuts, man. And so I took that to be like, well, fuck, this is the Avengers of Disney. So I I can use every IP that the park's got and shit. There was some obvious, like, you know, you wouldn't want to touch star Wars and shit like that. But, um, you know, the classic park, it was going to be set in Disneyland and stuff. So all that stuff was fair game. And you could literally like, you know, like Walt was a character. Um, uh, Mickey Mouse, of course, was a character, but you know, he didn't pop up until fucking later, but he was always around. Um, every character, the main villain was Captain Hook. Um, so, uh, who I wanted Russell Brand for. So, um, you know, I, I went and pitched that. They were like, I, I, I did it just because I'm like, well, you know, I work. I'm not really in Hollywood. I live in Hollywood, but I don't really work in the business, but sometimes I do. I'm ten, I'm, I'm outside the business. I'm business adjacent. I kind of, we do our own thing over here, but you know, there have been times where I've been in that world and it'd been a while. So I was like, let me like, see, just for the fuck of it, I got nothing to do. And they went for my pitch. It was crazy. They were like, you know, we like it. Let's do it. And they made a deal. And I started writing a show, um, for, uh, Disney plus, well, it wasn't called Disney plus then it was called like the, the Disney, um, Netflix like app and had a very long title. Um, I think they were calling it DTC direct to consumer, uh, app. So I went to work with the kids at the Disney channel. They were my, uh, my execs and I had a fucking blast. It was one of the most uh, enjoyable times I ever had creating something. Um, I would find even more joy later on doing masters of the universe, but man, these kids, like when I was first in this business, the studio execs and stuff, they weren't creative. They were suits. You know, uh, these kids were all writers, former writers that they were like, let's at a certain point, they were like, let's make writers, the execs in charge of this shit. So, Oh, they all had great fucking ideas and, and showed me how to shape like a series and set up shit and pay it off and whatnot. Shit that's obvious if you watch TV. Um, but like when you're doing it yourself, I, well, I didn't think about it. And then they were like, you could do this. And I'm like, oh shit, that's what they do on TV. So it was an education too, man. The whole time this was going on, I swear to you, from the moment I went into pitch, all throughout the writing process, I said, this is never going to happen. There's no way this ever happens, but fuck it. I'll go with it for as long as it's, is all it's gotta be worth a story and shit. Plus don't get me wrong. They paid me to, to do the you know writing and stuff. So, but the whole time I was like, this ain't never going to fucking move forward and stuff. So, but we kept moving forward, man. And like I wrote the pilot script and there was a full Bible for the entire, uh, arc of the first, you know, season and stuff, which would have basically told the story of the first book. And, uh, you know, shockingly, the good folks at Disney Channel were into it and I couldn't believe it and stuff. And I was like, oh, my God, man, maybe like maybe this might. Nah, nah. And I would say it's never going to happen. Then like it started getting real. Like, you know that if you see all the behind the scenes footage on uh, the Mandalorian, they got those video walls that create a backdrop and shit. They brought me over to Disney to show me that like years ago, like this is going to be the future. And there was a big wall and they put up this post-industrial backdrop. And like, I sat there with my phone and as I moved, it moved and shit. It was fucking dope. And like, this is what we'd like to use as the backgrounds and, you know, rather than green screen and shit. I'm like, it's your money. Oh God. Yeah. This looks expensive as fuck. Yeah. Let's, I guess if you want this, let's do this. I met with a producer up in Vancouver uh, while I was working on an episode of Supergirl. 
um, and went through like budgets and potential places to shoot. Like it just kept inching more toward reality. And I was like, holy shit, man, this actually might happen. Still hadn't named the Disney plus app yet, but they were like, this is going to be one of our first shows. Uh, we've already greenlit high school musical, the series, and, uh, we're, this is like next. So that'll start it. And then this is going to happen. Kingdom keepers. They're like, we love it. We love the, it's all the Disney IP at once. And I did, I used everything, everything that you could see in the park. They all fucking came to life and shit. So, um, I was over in England, uh, visiting JJ when he was shooting rise of Skywalker. Was that the period? Yes. Um, staying in Slough from, from the office, the British, the office. And I got the, you know, uh, email from my agent going like kingdom keeper has been killed. And I was like, what, what happened, man? Like, like, Oh my God, are you kidding? And this was the, the word. There's a new exec that was brought in on, on the app, um, uh, the, on what would become Disney plus. And he read it and this is what here, let me get back to my tweet. So they put up this tweet, uh, attractions magazine is kingdom keeper series in development for Disney plus according to Kevin Smith. It is, I must've talked about it on a podcast or something, but they misunderstood, thought it was currently an active development. So I wrote on Twitter, that was a blast to write two years ago. It was planned as one of the first shows to launch on what would become Disney plus. Then a new exec was put in charge of the app and he killed KK kingdom keepers said we use too much Disney IP in one project. Every par character in the park comes to life. That was true. That was the reason I was given that the thing was killed. Um, I was like, Oh my God, did the new guy did not like the script. And that, that, that wasn't that said there's too much fucking IP in this show. You use every damn Disney character um, in one. And they didn't think this was a good idea. So thing got killed. So I was never like really overly upset because I never thought it would happen anyway and shit. And it's their channel and their fucking property. So I'm certainly not going to be like, no. And it wasn't even my book. It was Ridley Pearson's book. So, you know, I got paid very well and stuff and I got to work with really cool people and shit. And they were so sweet. And, um, like I got to, to go to Disney after dark, I walked up on the, on, on space mountain, when it's closed, we walk the fucking track, man. I was like, Oh my God, this is what our, there's an episode set <clears throat> on space mountain, which was inverted. It was really a Canyon or something, but, uh, like they were, you know, I was like, this is what the town should look like. It was a mining town and shit. We should just use the look of this place. Got, you know, shot. My phone video went into Walt's apartment with the, the candle or the light that's always on and stuff like that. So I got to do very cool things. And then suddenly it went away and I was like, well, you know, I didn't, I honestly, I was like, we were so close to like, all right, maybe we'll push Jay and silent Bob reboot for a year and just focus on this. And I, and I was like, you know, maybe we'll just keep them both spinning just in case. In my experience, you can't ever bet on anything. And so thankfully when they were like, this ain't happening, I was like, well, we're going to go make Jay and silent Bob reboot. No harm, no foul. So I put up this tweet this morning just to be like, hey, man, that show is old news and not happening and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, the key line about the then a new exec was put in charge of the app and he killed KK. A lot of people, of course, were like, who the fucking exec? So somebody wrote, uh, who was it? Steven uh, Santonia, who, who's a nice dude. It's not like he did wrong. But Steven writes, that new exec sounds like he has no idea what people would and wouldn't watch. And it does, based on my tweet, sound like that. So I had to follow up with this tweet, and this is the important part of the lesson. I said, the Disney Plus exec may have scrapped Kingdom Keepers, but he's also the guy who said, let's do Star Wars and Marvel Studio shows. So as much as I would have liked to make my show, I'm much happier watching The Mandalorian and can't wait for WandaVision. And then I hashtagged it, fan first, filmmaker second, because that's kind of true. Um, the important lesson here, of course, is like in the moment, you know, it was like, oh man, like that show didn't happen and we all worked on it and I had something to distract me and stuff, but like, oh man, or, you know, what, what was the point of all that and stuff like that? Um, or, oh man, why did they scrap our show? Or, oh man, this new guy scrapped our show. That new guy came in and said, let's do all this. And those are all the shows that I actually want to watch fucking love the Mandalorian, man. I watch that show. It makes me feel like I'm nine years old and shit. It takes me right back to the seventies. 
Um, so I would much up uh, fan first filmmaker second long before I was making shit for a living. I was just a guy who watched shit and still am a person that just like likes watching shit. So I was never like, you know, Oh man, fuck this guy and fuck Disney and shit like that. Um, but I didn't want people of course, like, you know, to feel the same way, like this guy ruined everything. This guy fucking gave us the shows we want to watch. I can't, I literally cannot wait to watch fucking WandaVision um, the Falcon and Winter Soldier and shit like that. Give me every goddamn Marvel show. So, um, the lesson is, you know, sometimes in a moment you're like, oh, fuck, you know, that, well, that sucks. And then, you know, you wait 10 minutes and fucking it don't suck anymore. Something positive comes out of something potentially uh, perceived as negative. Um, there's a wonderful moment in, uh, the movie, what was it called? Um, um, Char Charlie Wilson's War, Tom Hanks, Philip Seymour Hoffman. And it was written by Aaron Sorkin. And um, he tells a story um, about, uh, you know, the, the little boy in the village gets a, uh, a horse. And everybody's like, oh, how wonderful. And then the village wise man's like, We'll see. And then the little boy falls off the horse and breaks his leg. And everyone's like, oh, my God, how horrible. And the village wise man says, we'll see. And then a war breaks out. And so they're taking all the young men to war. But this guy can't go because his leg's broken. And everyone's like, how lucky. And then the old man's like, we'll see. And so forth and so on. So, you know, you can't ever judge in a moment. Life is full of those moments and they all add up to something at the end and stuff. But the game is constantly changing in the middle of play, man. Uh, you can't, nothing that happens is permanent, good or bad. You know, we're Americans. So we like to believe that like when a good thing happens, it's going to be this way forever and shit. And as we've just seen recently by, um, uh, by current events, you know, you can't always count on that thing, good thing, staying a good thing forever and stuff. But you can't always be like, oh, the good thing stopped and now it's all bad. Because then good things come from bad things, man. You know what George Carlin say? Life is a zero-sum game. Like at the end of the day, you know, people try to amass wealth. I'm not blasting people for wanting money. I, I'm a capitalist as much as the next person. Maybe not as much as some people. Maybe not good at it, I guess is the point. But, you know, when you try to amass like a bunch of wealth, eventually like life ends and, you know, you're like, oh, I, I missed a lot of cool shit. I mean, you know, it's not maybe you didn't miss. Maybe you make choices and sometimes you feel like that's what I want more than anything. And then sometimes that choice winds up being your undoing and stuff. And sometimes the shit you back into uh, winds up defining you. George Carlin didn't want to be a comedian, stand up comedian. He wanted to be Danny Kaye. He wanted to be a song and dance man in movies and stuff. Comedy was just something he backed into. He's like, I could do this for now. And it defined his entire life. He's one of the greatest comedians that ever lived. So you never know, kids. That's the point of that Disney Plus story. Eventually, the channel was called Disney Plus. And here, here's a sweet little PS to that story. So there was an exec in that room when I pitched Kingdom Keepers who left Disney shortly thereafter. He went and joined a company called Mattel. And one day I got a phone call from my agent going, the folks at Mattel want to talk to you about something. I said, really? What? All right, you know what? I'll go. Uh, where is it? And they said, Santa Monica. I said, fucking Santa Monica? I ain't going. Like, that's too far because it's like a half an hour away. And traffic-y. And uh, they were like, well, you know, you might. What if they came to your house? I said, okay, if they're coming to my house, I'll t fucking totally take the meeting. And the guy, there were two guys. One was Rob David, who I worked with almost every day. Uh, the other guy was a guy who worked at Disney. Um, he was in the room when I did my pitch. And so he had said to Rob, like, hey, what about Kevin Smith for this Masters of the Universe thing? He gave a pitch at Disney right before I left for King of Keepers I really liked. And so they reached out to me and came over. And I was like, oh, my God, I would love to do that. So there you go, man. The Disney channel thing or the disney plus thing didn't happen um but it led to and nobody was ever going to see it um, but it led to 
Masters of the universe. You never fucking know. That's why you don't bitch too loudly in life. I've learned that, man. Fucking like, you know, I wish I hadn't bitched when I got thrown off the fucking airplane. Um, or not so much I wish I hadn't bitched. I was so mortified by that moment because I was like, the whole world figured out I'm fucking fat at once that I didn't have fun with it. And I'm the person that tries to have fun with everything and usually has a sense of humor about everything. That moment changed me in as much as it did teach me like, hey, you're as much as you think you're fucking like funny for a living, apparently you're very touchy about this fucking subject and shit like that. And so, you know, I remember David Letterman, like the Letterman show when he was still, you know, the late night with David Letterman. They were like, oh my God, come do the top 10. And I was like, no, I can't. Like, what? I'm fucking humiliated by this. Like, oh my God, like what? And then John Stewart on The Daily Show was like, come on the show. We'll get an airplane seat and show that you could fit in it. And I was like, what? No, my God, don't you get it? This is mortifying. And now in retrospect, I'm like, why the fuck didn't I do both of those things, man? Just own this fucking shit. Like, it's crazy. So, you know, and... In the moment, you, you never know, man. Um, bad thing could become a good thing. Great thing could become a horrible thing. Uh, you just got to ride ride the slide, kids. Uh, there it is. That's Rev Kev's Sunday morning sermon. I am a reverend, by the way, in the fucking ordained in the Universal Life Church, man. Or Oak, as we call it. Uh, thanks for hanging out and hearing that story. Um, so remember, man. If you don't get a Kingdom Keepers, you could get a Mandalorian. And that's fucking way better for my money. Um, all right. Thanks for making me feel relevant on a Sunday morning. Somewhere back in time. It's 830 right here. I'm an altar boy back in the day. So 19. Uh, let me see. I become an altar boy at 1970. He had to be in second grade. So 1977, 78. And I was an altar boy up to when I graduated old PH. Our Lady Perpetual Help. And so, uh, you know, that was 1983, June of 83. And I even served mass a little bit after that, even though I went to a public high school. So my point being, somewhere in the streams of time is 8.30 on a Sunday out here in Los Angeles right now. But somewhere in the streams of time, it's 8.30 on a Sunday morning in Highlands, New Jersey, circa 1981, 82. And I'm serving a mass, you know, watching the priest and going, maybe I want to be a priest one day. And then I realized I don't want to be a priest. I just wanted to be on stage in front of people. I just wanted people to have to listen to me. That's why I like that job at Quick Stop. Because, like, you know, people need cigarettes. They got to talk to you. In any event, thank you for letting me feel like it was a Sunday morning again. Um, and this time, I'm in the damn pulpit. Rev Kev. All right, folks. Uh, on 420, uh, Universal uh, uh, is doing a Focus Films. Focus Features is doing a live watch along screening of mall rats a movie that I made 25 fucking years ago that I'll be hosting or whatever. So find out where that information is. And, uh, tonight I'm a, me and Ralph might try to live stream Hollywood Babylon. So hopefully see you later. Amen.